from Bethel High School in Hampton. WHCS Cable Channel 5 presents Peninsula District Girls Basketball. The Hampton Crabbers visiting the Bethel Bruins. Good evening, everybody. I'm Tim Cole along with Bob Hitz. We welcome you to the Bethel High School Gymnasium for the contest between the 8 and 2 Bethel Bruins and the 1 and 7 Hampton Crabbers. Very quickly, let's go to courtside. Bob Hitz has head coach Vernon Plater of the Bethel Bruins. Coach, uh, I'm glad you took time to talk with us a little bit. You and Kickatan fighting for second place. Jason Minchville, what do you have to do, your team have to do, to get to that next step? Well, I think we've got to increase our defensive pressure. Right now, our defensive pressure is, it starts off well and it ends up well. We had not gotten the second and third quarter put together yet, and I think once we get our defensive pressure put together, a little bit more rebound, I think we'll be a lot better team. Well, I know you've got a very quick team, and everybody mm -hmm. that talks about Bethel talks about quickness and your defensive pressure, so right, right. you put the word out to a few teams. Yeah, we want to play good defense, and that's what we want to be known for. I, I think our speed is good, but at times it's bad. It's the, the, the players have a difficult time getting themselves motivated to push themselves defensively at times. And, and we just got to get that second and third quarter put together, put together a whole game. Hopefully it'll happen tonight. I hope good so. You know, I'm looking forward to this game. Thank okay, you. Appreciate good it. Enough. Let's right. run back over to Tim. Okay. All right, Bob, thank you. And thank okay. you, uh, uh, yeah. Coach Clayton. Yeah. Done a great job at a short time at uh, Bethel High School and uh, got the team off to an 8 2 start. In fact, they beat the Hampton Crabbers last time out in a makeup game. And uh, of course, the uh, schedule with the Hampton Crabbers boys team being delayed because of the uh, state championship football game. So uh, they've had to revise the schedule somewhat, and uh, some of these games were made up after the fact. Momentarily, Bob will have Paula Hines, the uh, brand new head coach of the Lady Crabbers, for you. And it'll give the opportunity to remind you that tonight's contest is brought to you through sponsorships of the following. Zoom Sitco with five convenient Hampton locations. By Hampton Chevrolet in Hampton. Bring up for your next thing, John, called Gear Up. And in part by Wood Funeral Home, where the funeral director is Richard Pulley. We thank our sponsors. If you would like to be a sponsor of Channel 5 Sports, whether it be the basketball, uh, as we are into now, and of course down the road we'll have baseball, softball, maybe some soccer. Uh, we have excellent opportunities for you to get your company out there in front of the public. Okay, very quickly now, Bob has Paul Hines, the head coach of the uh, Lady Crabbers. I got Paul Hines, first year coach, you gotta yes. be excited. Yes, very excited, very excited. Your team has is, is, is got to get used to your your type of coaching. What do you see as the future of this, the Hampton girls? Well, I'm trying to start a program here developing from the eighth grade through the JV to the varsity so we can get a good tradition started. The problems I've had this year is I have a very young, inexperienced team, very, very little experience in the past, and they're just having a hard time getting it together. But one thing, I think we would have had it together already, except that because our football team did so well, we're six games behind in experience, and I have to say that's really hurt us. Hopefully, I mean, I, I'm real happy for our Hampton Crabbers, but, you know, hopefully next year we can get started on time. Good enough. Well, good luck to you tonight. Thank you so there much. You go. Let's go back over to Tim. All right. Thanks, thank you, Paul. Bob, and uh, thank you, Coach Hines. First year effort for Paula Hines, of course, uh, following in the footsteps of a very successful David Six, who has gone on to be the boys basketball coach up at Gloucester High School. So uh, David Six uh, with some big shoes to fill, uh, Paula Hines off to a, a kind of a rough start with, as she mentioned, a young team. So uh, as time goes down, though, she will do better and better getting that team out of the court. They've got some good players, and uh, they've also lost some experience. So. It'll take them a while, but they'll turn it around. Oh, they really will, Tim. It's just, and like she said, with being behind all these other teams, not getting that uh, that game experience hurts. All right, let's do the introductions. First of all, for the Lady Crabbers, Terry Smith, number three, is the first lady to be introduced. Katrina Fennell, number 23. And number 44 is Ellen Kiger. Number four, Sharonda Richardson. And the final starter to be introduced, is Shannon Richardson, number 32. There you see the starters, Sharonda and Shannon. Are they twins? Yes. 
though they're sisters? They're sisters, right? And <laughs> yeah, they're twins. Not only, but also. I think so. All right, for the Bethel Bruins, they are introducing number 24, Lakita Palmer. Number 30 is Vanessa Schultz. Number 32, Shannon, whoops, wrong, wrong list here. Let's go over to the other side, Siobhan McKinnon is out there along with number 30, Monica Bryant. Number 24. 24 is Shawana Brumskin. Lakeisha Anders, number 41, and Monica Bryant, and Carla Roan, number 32. There you see them on your screen, the Lady Bruins. Coach hey, Have Vernon we talked about our uh, zebras tonight? The zebras, they are <laughs> McKeever Bird. That's the gentleman you see with his back to you with the ball. And another uh, person that you and I are very familiar with, Carter Ficklin. Will what be did you call umpire. him? Carter First and Ten Ficklin? That's him, yeah. He's, <laughs> he does uh, the football officiating. You know, I wouldn't feel like I was doing a Bethel High School game if there wasn't snow on the ground. <laughs> Why is that? We have a well, because we do the games in January. <laughs> Last year, the year before, as long as I can remember, when we've come here to the den, we've had snow to contend with. But fortunately, the snow has uh, abated and uh, we are able to get this game in tonight. So the Bethel Bruins, after the Hampton turnover, will bring it across the timeline to uh, remind you of some of the rules on the girls' basketball, eight-minute quarters, no shot clock, and pretty much after that, the rules are the same. There are some uh, new rules in effect this year, and since this is our first game of the season, we'll make you aware of those as we go along. Well, one thing you'll see is Hampton is gonna play a zone for the most part, because they're not as quick and his experience is this uh, Bethel team, but Bethel will play a man-to-man, -man. they'll pressure you, they'll uh, press you all over the court, they'll want to up-tempo, and uh, right now they both seem a little bit just trying to get the butterflies out. Baseline hook shot is no good, rebound comes off to the Crabbers, that is Shannon Richardson who kicks it outside, and Sharonda Richardson, We'll set it up. Terry Smith, baseline jumper, is short. And the rebound comes off to the Bruins in the hands of Lakeisha Anders. And there's your point guard. McKinnon does a good From job. the Ooh. corner. That is Carla Roan, number 32, connecting for the first basket of the ball game. And the Lady Bruins take an early lead with 6.44 left to go in the first period. Tim Cole and Bob Hintz. Happy New Year, everybody. We are bringing you our first coverage of the new year. And we got a foul. Tim, we will pick a player of the game for both for both of these teams tonight, and they will receive a plaque and a shirt. The plaque comes from Buckwall Engraving, located at Kickatan Road. For all your engraving needs, contact as you watch that shot. Contact Jim at 723-6067. Dave Buckwall, the owner. The shirt comes from the Islander Hardware and Sporting Goods located in Pocosin. They can meet all your sports needs with a full line of athletic goods, both team, individual equipment, and uniforms, plus screen printing. Call Dave Chubb, 868-8467, John Roberts owner. First of two free throws is off the mark by Katrina. And there you see number 23 at the free throw line. Second chance is good. So the Crabbers now trail by one. There you see Paula Hines on your screen directing her team. That foul, by the way, was on Monica Bryant, her first. Shot from the corner is retrieved by the shooter, Roan, and then her pass inside is intercepted. Hampton wants to fast break, but quickly back on defense are the Bruins, so the Crabbers will set it up. Terry Smith from outside, no good. And the rebound comes off to Bryant. Corner jumper, no good, and the Crabbers had good position underneath. That was Terry Smith who will push it up. Smith loses her footing, and before traveling is called, and a good job on her part. It really is. It out. Yeah, you know, no, that's a nice entry pass. Nobody is behind uh, the uh, number 23 for the Crabbers. That's Katrina Fennell. Nobody is behind her. Nice little lob pass. She just got to learn to put it in a basket. <laughs> now, if you hear that, that's not popcorn, folks. Our monitor here acting up with the, all the moisture that we've had in the last few days and uh, trying to dry out some of the equipment. All right, here come the Bruins leading 2-1. to one. Left side feet, good defense by Richardson, and she'll hustle after the ball 
and from her back throws the ball to a teammate. Nice job well, by Richardson. Great hustle. Ellen Kiger was the teammate who got the pass. This is Terry Smith from the top of the key. No good. And a loose ball underneath and a foul is called. And I believe that's on uh, Fennell, number 23, Tim. She kind of, <laughs> she instead of blocking out, she put her hand and <laughs> kind of shoved the young lady into the side. Uh, we want you to go after the ball, but you got to do it with a little let more finesse. A little less Fennell, a little more finesse. <laughs> they, man, you on top. Happy New Year to you yeah, too, Timmy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Knocked out of bounds by Fennell. It will still belong to the Bruins. They lead two to one here. A little more than a couple of minutes gone in the first period. Now, one right. thing that, that I don't know if the, the fans know, but these two teams played each other last Saturday. There was not a game Tuesday because of the uh, snow. So this is really an instance where they're playing back to back, so to speak. A shot from the corner by McKinnon. Loose ball is picked off by Bryant and then the reach in foul by Richardson. And that'll be a non shooting foul. Four to one Bethel Bruins. We will have the boys game between these two schools as well for you. Bryant will put it up and hits. And she's usually the one that plays inside. That's a nice touch she has on that ball. Pass picked off. And the ball knocked out of bounds, but it was last touched by the Crabbers. And now timeout is called by Paula Hines. For the Crabbers with the score six to one. Want to remind you that Zoom's Sitco with five convenient Hampton locations. They're proud to, we are proud, I should say, to have David Allen and Zoom sponsoring us again for basketball. Zoom supports the student athletes in the Hampton City Schools. Also, Gear Up Printing can handle all your printing needs. See Tom Gear at 1909 North Armstead Avenue in Hampton. We appreciate our corporate sponsors helping to bring these contests to you. And as I mentioned while uh, Bob was lining up uh, Paula Hines a little ago, I want to remind you if you'd be interested in advertising on our Channel 5 coverage of the different sporting events, give Scotty Bowers a call during regular business hours, 8.30 to 5 over at uh, Channel 5. What is that number again, Bob? 850 50, 5365. 5, or you can call Bob Hitz. Oh, eight. you can call me. That's <laughs> right. Give me a call. I'm glad to talk with you. A little more than four and a half minutes remaining here in the first period. Bethel Bruins out to a good start this season as they have uh, amassed a record to date of eight and two. Benchville and Kingatown, the only defeats on the schedule for the Bruins. Ball was knocked out of bounds by the Lady Bruins, so Terry Smith will trigger for the Lady Crabbers. Full court pressure being applied by the Bruins. Smith double teamed in the backcourt and finally is able to get it to Fennell. Now the Crabbers do have a two on one. Shot from outside is good and that one is taken by Sharonda Richardson, her first basket. Well the Crabbers seem to be a, a little more aggressive in that zone than I'm sure that the Bruins are expecting a nice three-pointer. That was by Siobhan McKinnon. She has five points. McKinnon uh, has had some big games. In fact, her worst outing is just 14 points. So she's uh, done a great job. She's averaging right at uh, 19 points per game. Oh, that's that's, a, a, that's a healthy average. Done a real good job. And by the way, we want to thank our uh, friends at the Daily Press. Sports writers over there, the fine sports writers, Mike Keach, and Jennifer Williams, and all of the other, uh, Mike Holsklaw, a bunch of those people, for providing statistics for us. Here's the three-point shot of a moment ago by McKinnon. There's nothing but net. Got a chance to uh, do a little interview with uh, Juanetta Vini uh, over the holidays, and uh, she's uh, really enjoying herself down to, uh, down to Charleston. Doing a real good job, 
graduate last year from this uh, Hamptons Crammer. She's one of the reasons they're rebuilding now is uh, her, she was a starter for four years over there. Well, actually three years, one year was at Phoebus, but. Uh, yeah, it's hard to replace someone like her. Yes, it really is. I mean, not only her scoring, but her overall leadership. And she's doing real good. You know, I asked her how she's doing in school, and she said, well, I got two A's, two B's, and two C's. And I said, well, that's not bad for a semester. She said, yeah, but Grandma doesn't like it. She was all A's. <laughs> I said, well, Grandma's are that way. <laughs> sure they are. Bethel up on top, 11 to three now, with 3.28 remaining. Seven points for McKinnon here in the first quarter. McKinnon had an excellent game against Tab. She had 31 points in the opening game of the season. Substitutions for the Hampton Crabbers. Number 42, Lakinia Parker will come in the game, replacing Terry Smith. She is guarded by Anders at the baseline. Pass in bounds comes to Richardson. Cross court to Parker. And her pass a little too tall for Fennell. Loose ball controlled by the Lady Crabbers. Neither one of these teams are shy about putting the ball up. And a turnover at the baseline. This uh, first period of action is sponsored in part by Wood Funeral Home, where Richard Pulley is the funeral director. On staff are Brian Wood and John Ware. 2.50 to go in the first period. Well, Hampton's extending that zone a little bit at half court, trying to uh, make uh, Bethel play make a long pass. Well, they make it the pass and then end up getting the basket off of it. So uh, got to be protecting underneath the basket. Nice Good left. Job. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Hit it with the left hander. Oh, that was pretty. Stole the ball and then scored. And here comes that tenacious defense again. It's tipped to McKinnon, and McKinnon is fouled on the reach in by Richardson, her second. They're just so quick, Tim. If you don't throw a pass with some zip on it, they're going to get there by the time the pass gets there. And that's what's happening to Hampton right now. They're, they're lobbing the ball, and uh, Bethel's so fast that they can get to those passes. Watch, watch that nice left. Beautiful. You know, that's a tough to teach some of these young. Uh, players that use that left hand. Ebony Dixon, number 31 in the lineup now for the Bruins. Bryant from way outside had it partially blocked, I believe. Yes, she did. Back comes Richardson and the Lady Crabbers. Down 15 to three here in the first period. Stolen again by the Bruins. Rumskin, and she makes the Crabbers pay with a layup. And you can see how that tenacious defense will wear you down. That was a nice look over weak side. But see how fast they are, Tim? I mean, there was an open player under the basket, made the pass, and Bethel's fast enough to get back and uh, knock it out of bounds. Great hustle. Shannon Richardson will come out of the game in uh, favor of Lakita Power, number 24, who's checked in. Shot from way outside is off the mark. Back come the Lady Bruins. Can't get the layup to fall, and then we've got a ball knocked out of bounds, last touched by the Lady Crabbers. And the Bruins will uh, further substitute. They'll bring in number 42, Rashida Luer, in place of Bryant. So Luter is in the game. Good feet underneath, shot won't go. Luter was on the back of the Hampton player, but didn't know the call. <laughs> Now that was definitely a foul over the back, but uh, no call from the officials. Can't see everything. That's Carter, first attempt, Ficklin, giving the ball <laughs> to the Bruins. That is Bradshaw, or Sean Bradshaw, also in the game as uh, Vernon Clater has gone to his bench early here in the game. Give everybody a chance to put some time in. A lot of contact, but no foul. 
Open in the corner. Shot is off the mark. Loose ball batted around, controlled by the Lady Crabbers, and then she tries to bring it out and gets fouled for her efforts. That was 24. Palmer trying to bring it. Uh, yeah, Palmer. Well, one thing that, that uh, Hampton is starting to pick up is when they're getting double teamed, the open man is uh, at the floor corner, and they've made some good passes. They just can't make the basket. That'll come. Tamika Guild checks in the lineup now, number 33 for the Bruins, and immediately the Bruins are able to steal the ball. And this is Guild, her shot a little too strong. Follow-up is no good, but a foul is called. I'm not too sure about that one. I've seen, seen more contact. I thought it was all ball. I don't know which one he's calling it on. Oh, he's calling it on 44. And that is uh, Ellen and before, yeah, to make sure I get the right one, that's Joey Lee, that's Ellen, right. Yeah, that's what I did a minute ago. <laughs> looked, looked at the wrong lineup. I need to put these color-coded for us. I hey, think that, that would do, right? That would be a really good idea. Terry Smith checks back in for the Lady Crabbers. Two shots coming, and nothing but net on the first one for Keisha Keeler. Ketizia, I think is how that's pronounced. And I'm apologizing right up front for any mispronunciations. I've been off for a while. Well, you, you're doing better than I would be. Less than a minute to go in the first. 18 to three is the score in favor of the Lady Bruins. <laughs> Heavy contact and no, no foul. <laughs> No uh, blood, no foul. Is that well, the well, it kind of looked like one of those good blocks we saw last season in football. <laughs> yeah, I'd say. Good shot of, uh, who was that we had in there? Who was that mass man? <laughs> I believe that's Big Ray. And Ruins throw it away. Stolen back by the Bruins. Two on one, shot doesn't go. Loose ball is picked up and then lost and finally controlled by the Crabbers. And then knocked out of bounds. Well, nice actually, I think she dribbled it off her own foot after the uh, defensive person hit it. Want to uh, make all the fans aware of the fact that if you plan to come out to watch the girls basketball games this year and the boys, that uh, they've moved the starting time back for the girls to uh, an official starting time now, 5.30 p.m. And the boys game at 7.30 p.m. So it used to be the boys game followed the girls game at whatever time the first game ended. It was 15 minutes after that. But uh, it's 5.30 and 7.30 now are the start times. So our first period has come to a rapid conclusion, and uh, with that in mind, I want to remind you that one of the sponsors for the first period was Hampton Chevrolet, and they are, of course, at 1073 West Mercury Boulevard in Hampton. We appreciate uh, Hampton Chevrolet for continuing to uh, bring these contests in part to you here on Channel 5. If you're watching, listen to the girls. Well, we'll watch a little bit of the basketball game. This is some of the replay of a moment ago. And also, we, watch the also, we do want to thank uh, Dave Buckwalter, Buckwalter Engraving, and uh, John Roberts at uh, Island of Hardware and Sporting Goods for the uh, plaques and the T-shirt that we will be awarding a player of the game from each one of these two teams tonight. We've got a little uh, uh, different twist to our schedule this year, too. We're going to have a couple of Newport News schools uh, yeah. that will be covering games. In fact, next Friday, we will be at Denby High Denby. School with the uh, Kickatan Warriors. And I believe it's a Friday after that, uh, your son's alma mater, Ferguson, will be at, at Phoebus. Yep. We'll have Denby and 
Kigatan, and then Ferguson and Phoebus. Oh, it's kind of neat to get Ferguson in, Tim. If no, nothing else, then it's the last year that the school is going to be open. It kind of the schedule worked out that way. It's, we didn't plan it, but that's just the way it worked out. Good hustle by the defense, uh, the Bruins, Lady Bruins. One of the things that uh, Vernon Clater has instilled in this program, uh, and not that it was lacking before, but it's definitely a signature of his style, is hustle on defense. He defense creates offense. Fennell gets fouled, and a basket will count. That was Walking a good foul. move by Fennell to the basket. The uh, Bruin just stepped in, did not get set. And one thing about a charge and a, and a, a blocking foul, once the player that's shooting leaves the ground, you cannot move into the position where they have to come down. You've got to give them you know, room to come down, and that was the case that time, I believe. Katizia Keller is the guilty party on the foul. So Fidel has a chance at a three-point play, doesn't get the basket, but the rebound comes to the Crappers, and then they throw it away. Eighteen to seven, about a half minute into the second period here at the Bethel High School Gymnasium. You're watching the Lady Crabbers, one and seven, and the Bethel Bruins, the Lady Bruins, I should say, eight and two. This game videotaped. Let's see if I can get this right. On the 12th of January, right? Is it today as well? Yep. I mean, I was uh, I, I was in the if it several, is, it should be several different states. And I was going to say uh, where if this is Tuesday is Belgium. Yeah, I think that's. <laughs> I was in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, let's see, yesterday I was in Washington D.C. and I was in Knoxville. Then I was in Charlotte, North Carolina. And then I was back to Newport News. I'm not sure what day it is or where I am, but <laughs> we're glad to be bringing you this game here on Channel Five. That's right. Terry Smith gets her name in the scorebook with the first of two free throws. Visited the, uh, the one of the friendliest cities I've ever been, Knoxville, Tennessee. The people down there just couldn't be nicer. I mean, they just went out of their way to, to be nice to us. Had a well, great time. you go down there with the big bucks, Tim. They always treat you that That's way, right? right? That's right. We <laughs> stayed at Motel 6. And, and well, beg, they always leave the light on, right? That's right. Leave the light on and beg <laughs> rides from their courtesy vehicle. Yeah, we, hey, spare no expenses. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that uh, Knoxville's, I've never been, I've been to Nashville, I've never been to Knoxville. So uh, nice I've heard place. other people talk about the, how friendly the people are. They really are. are. I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't say that lightly. They, uh, they just absolutely couldn't have been nicer on every occasion. They just, everybody bent over backwards to be nice to us. It's, it's a refreshing experience in this day uh, of some of the people in this world are not quite as friendly as they used to be. Yeah. And uh, these people just uh, just couldn't have been nicer. A little bit of hometown flavor. Yeah. Got a chance to talk with uh, athletic director Dennis Kozlowski. Uh, he's looking good. Had a good uh, holiday. Looking mighty sharp tonight. We get yeah, a shot. He's that just must, uh, that just must be his new your, Christmas suit, right? <laughs> just the top of your screen there. He's over there talking to some of uh, Hampton's finest. Coach Dennis Kozlowski, yeah, as well as there he is, uh, the uh, dapper uh, gentleman with the graying hair and the good-looking suit. And didn't, he didn't can't buy, talk without his hands. <laughs> didn't, didn't buy that thing off the rack, I'll tell you. <laughs> Fennell at the free throw line with two, and she hits the first. She is two of four from the free throw line, and she has four points here in the first half. Four of her team's nine, I should add. And she can't get the second one to go. The Bruins are so quick oh, down on nice. a three on one. That was a nice feed from McKinnon. It just didn't convert. Too strong off the glass, and then the Lady Crabbers knock it out of bounds. Uh, Ebony Dixon, number 31, checks in for the Bruins. Ah, that's a pretty name. Oh, 
Good and quick move by Ebony Dixon. Doesn't go. Follow up does go. That one put up underneath by number 42. Yes. That's Rashida Luer. Luter. The Bruins have such quick hands. They get a piece of that ball just about every time it seems like they, that the Crabbers make a pass. Stick back won't go. Back come the Lady Bruins. Quickly down the court into the fast break situation. That's McKinnon again. Well, that young lady is also very, very good track. She's runs also got great hands. She stole that ball, got her own rebound, put it back up and in. So she is dominating here. She has 13 points in the first half. Five and a half minutes to go in that first half. So you're looking at some high scoring from McKinnon. On the way to the hoop, the foul is committed by Luter. But you say she's got 13 of that 24 points? Yeah. And I would have to venture the, that a uh, good half of them at least are on hustle. Fidel will go back to the free throw line. Uh, you know, speed is something you can't teach. Hey, watch the foul here. But speed with under control. And that's what she is. She throws a lot of, she's got a lot of speed, but she's under control. She's not out of control. And that's what the coaches are looking for in basketball. And in, in track, you can be out of control. That is, just wants you to go as fast as you can if you're running a sprint. But here, you got to be under control, and she seems to be. Two shots coming. Uh, coincidentally, that uh, also puts Hampton in the bonus. She would have gotten two shots in any event, but uh, with that last foul, it's the bonus time. And, and what's that new rule change now? Okay, for right now, see, we get a one and one on the seventh foul. But on the 10th foul, it's a two-shot foul in each half. So once the team has committed 10 fouls, then the uh, opposing team, every time that they, there's a foul called on them, they would get two shots rather than the one and one. It's supposed to make the game go quicker, but it really doesn't. <laughs> well, it's uh, I guess the, uh, the logical uh, conclusion is, is to deter a team from the silly fouls uh, late in a, in a game. Well, that's that's the theory. Yeah. It won't work, but it's a heck of a theory. <laughs> well, Tim, is, it goes back to the point that a good foul shooter is going to make the the, the the both of them, whether it's one and one or two shot anyway. But it gives the, uh, the weaker uh, foul shooter an opportunity, an opportunity to not to have pressure to make the first one to get the second one. So it really helps the uh, the uh, uh, foul shooters hasn't got a lot of confidence. I tell you that you know you and I have talked about it before, and there's been a lot of discussion about it. I would love to see that uh, that implementation of the uh, the international rules where you have the choice of taking of it out of, taking and, the ball out of bounds. And you know that's going to come in, in the future, but it'll come to the college first, just like this two shot thing, and then it'll filter two or three years later down to the high schools. But I I like that. I also like the lane that fans out and gets wider at the base uh, that they have an in international. Uh, they've got some rules in there I think it would uh, enhance. They, you can't do a lob, uh, you know, where you lob the ball up and catch and put it. You can't do that in, in the international, so that I like. I like where you can do that. In, in, well, the alley-oop, you mean? Yes, you the alley-oop. You can't do alley-oop in, uh, in the international. I didn't know that. Well, the theory is the ball is up above the rim. If you catch it there, you need to come down and go back up with it. All right. Lost the little cover uh -oh. off your microphone. <laughs> Boy, I talk so much, it talked right off. <laughs> Foul called against the Lady Crabbers. They are not over the limit, so the Bruins will simply get the ball. Actually, it was a... Uh, I think it's now that they've got the uh, one and one up. Yeah, that one got them to the bonus. 419 remaining, 26 to 12, a little bit of a run by the Crabbers, but that is retaliated by Brumskin, who hits. She has four points. Richardson gets it to Fidel. She can't hold on to it, and then we've got a reach-in foul. I think he's going to call that on Fidel, and that's exactly who he's calling it on. I thought it was going the other way, but... Uh, 
McKeever Bird saw it his way. <laughs> and his way is the one that counts. That's right. Well, they asked that uh, one baseball official, you ever make a mistake? He said, nope. Because what I called, that's what it was. <laughs> that's okay. One and one is on the line here for uh, Shawana Brumpskin, who has four points. This is her first visit to the free throw line. And she won't get the bonus, but her teammate gets the rebound. And then a good hustle on the baseline by the Crabbers. That was Richardson who did a great job Jeez. of diving for the ball and then bouncing it off of a Bruin player out of bounds. That was. That's quick thinking. Smith. Back to Richardson. Palmer will drive the lane, kicks it on the baseline, and just a little too strong. Uh, a little Richardson. bit out of control. She, yeah. would, she did a nice little spin move and thought, well, it's like a dance. Let's continue. <laughs> But it, it looked was, good. Yeah, she did. Looked good, but she turned the ball over. <laughs> Hampton is doing their uh, own little bit of uh, full court pressure and they're causing the Bruins to turn the ball over. You know, it's, it's a, there's an old theory a team that presses doesn't like to be pressed. I did not know that. So that's two things I've learned here. <laughs> My golly, I, if I sit here for another half of this thing, I'm going to come away with some knowledge tonight. I like that. I can press you, but you can't press me. That's right. But it, it's, it's theory because they want to control the tempo. Sure. You start controlling the tempo with your press, it makes it, it, it makes them mad. Yes, <laughs> Number one. But it really takes them out of their, their flow and their uh, 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 game plan that they want to do. And you'll see a lot of coaches that uh, may not start out pressing, press a team that starts pressing them, and that's the, the, one of the reasons. Terrence. We've got some good teams this year in the Peninsula District. The girls' uh, race is uh, fairly close, except for Mitchville. I think they're undefeated. Mitchville is uh, that's uh, that. pretty well classed by themselves, although Kickatan and uh, uh, this uh, Bethel team, I think both can give them, uh, give them both of them a good, uh, give Mitchville a good uh, run for their money. Lady Crabbers battling back now, trail by 13, 28, 15. And they've come quite a ways from early in the game. They uh, were being blown out. It was 18 to three at one time. But they've narrowed that lead down now, 28, 15. Well, I see some of the Phoebus people here tonight. Phoebus was supposed to play up at uh, Lafayette, but uh, they didn't have school in uh, Williamsburg and James City County, so uh, Phoebus did not get to uh, play. So I see some of the uh, girl Players, lady players from Phantoms and some of the coaches here to uh, scout these teams tonight. Monica Bryant will go to the free throw line. She'll get one and one as neither team has reached that 10 team foul limit yet. Well, Monica's 6 1, Tim. She is a senior on the team. Ham, uh, Bethel doesn't have but four seniors, only two are starters. So they're still a fairly young team. Foul before the shot. Now, another thing that we will talk about uh, is they are using three officials in the boys' contest rather than two. So we'll talk about that when we do the next contest. Palmer does not get a bonus shot. Missed the first. Quickly back down. Look at that end. speed. That's speed. Kinnon, I'm telling you, give her a baton and put her on the relay team. And she does. Yep. <laughs> Stole it again. I mean, you talk about it quick. <laughs> she was too fast that time. She was running before she had the ball. The ball didn't catch up with her. <laughs> A little more than two and a half minutes remaining in the first half. 30 to 15 as the Bruins have doubled the score on the Lady Crabbers. Tim Cole and Bob Hitz coming to you from the Bethel High School Gymnasium. The Bruins Den as it's referred to, I believe. That's exactly what it's referred to, the Den. McKinnon 
Moves the ball around nicely. High arching shot is good by Brumskin, and she has six points on three baskets. Again, the Bruins continue their full court press. And a man, I should add. That may have been back court, but it was so fast I missed it. And, and, there's, and there's your favorite athletic director. Chris Mitchell. Oh, I thought it was Diane Limmer. Diane Limmer. <laughs> a, a guy makes one little mistake. <laughs> but but you almost battle. did it the second time, but you caught yourself. In the heat of battle. <laughs> I have so many things to remember. Uh, no, you do well, Tim. <laughs> By the second half of the boys game, I will be a <laughs> babbling idiot in the way I feel tonight. I'm so tired, but I'm looking forward to that game, so I'll be juiced for that one by there the time we get ready. Ronald Curry and the Hampton Crabbers come bouncing in here to take on Mr. Foster and the Bethel Bruins. Should be a good one. Hope you'll stay tuned here on Channel 5. This is district basketball coming at you. Grabbers, throw it away. A good job of uh, blocking out to, to get the rebound, but then throw the ball away. Less than a minute and a half to go here in the first half. It's been all Bruins, 32 to 17, although the Crabbers have played much better in the second period. They really have. This is Fennell, nice move. Oh, very good move. She put it off the glass with the left hand. Yes, I, she I did. Check and see if she's left-handed all the time. And Bethel retaliates as Keller. I don't think Fennell is. I believe she shot a foul shot right handed, Tim. I thought she had two. That's interesting. We've seen two players tonight go to the left hand in that situation. Palmer will fire it up. It's a little too strong. And it goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Crabbers. 36 ticks of the clock left in our first half. I've had such a good time, I haven't talked about our sponsors. Oh, talk about them. Yeah, talk about gear up printing as we see the Lady Bruins. That's Brumskin again. Brumskin, yes, she's got eight points. Gear up printing for all your needs. Call Tom Gear at 827-8277. And I want to remind you too that Hampton Chevrolet is active in the community and ask you to, to remember to support your local school system and join the PTA. McKinnon. <laughs> That's right. And the buzzer sounds. Shot just off the mark as again the Bruins continue to double the score on the Hampton Crabbers at halftime. Our score is Bethel 38. The Lady Crabbers 19. Let me make sure I've done all my business. No, I haven't. As we go into halftime, remind you that Zoom Sitco has five convenient Hampton locations to serve you. All right, there's our score at halftime. We will return with a third period of action after this brief timeout. There you see some of the action from the first half as the Lady Bruins have raced out to a 38 to 19 lead over the Lady Crabbers. The scoring unofficially in the first half. The Lady Crabbers paced by Fennell with nine points. She had three two pointers and she was three out of six. Check that three out of seven from the free throw line. Palmer had four. She had uh, a basket and two of three free throws. Two points each for Kiger, Richardson, and Smith to round out the scoring. And the Crabbers did hit 7 of 14 from the free throw line. For the Lady Bruins, they were paced by Siobhan McKinnon with 17 first half points. She had six two-pointers, a three-pointer, and she was two for two from the free throw line. Eight points for Shawana Brumskin, all from the field. Four points for Lakeisha Anders. Uh, she also had two baskets. Three points for Katizia Keller. 
Two points for Monica Bryant, two points for Carla Roan, and two points for Rashida Luter. So that rounds out the scoring. And they, uh, they, the Bruins, were three of eight from the charity stripe in the first half. All right, second half is underway. Lady Crabbers have the ball to start the second stanza. And Hampton is in that man-to-man, -man, and they're going to pressure and uh, uh, not give you a clear shot or a clear route to the basket. And now Hampton is playing some man-to-man, uh, -man, full court. And they break the press as the Bruins get two from Carla Rohn. Well, the best way to break the press is to throw the ball over the press, but you got to catch it. It's got to be good passes. Hampton has trouble with that. Uh, Bethel did a good job. There's a good shot of uh, Vernon Clater, the uh, head coach at the Lady Bruins. 40 to 19 in favor of the Bruins. Hampton's in a, uh, like a box and one. Good feed down low for Anders, and she has six for the Bruins. Now that was a great job of breaking the press, but the uh, Crabber did not go. To, you got to step to the ball when it's past you. You can't wait for the ball to come to you. You got to step to it. So six quick points by the Bruins, and they uh, lead now 44 to 19, and the Crabbers turn it over once again. So the Crabbers, uh, like they did in the first period, coming out rather cold here and mishandling the ball, and the pressure has given the ball and points to the Bruins. Bethel's using a stack. They're, they're screening down low and popping people out to the wing against this man-to-man. -man. Off the glass and good by Sharonda Richardson. So that's her second basket. Shot won't go. Loose ball controlled by the Lady Crabbers. They'll bring it up three on two. Left side, Palmer too strong. Well, she got, uh, McKinnon got a hand on that ball, Tim. But she got a piece of it. Ball knocked out of bounds by the Crabbers. It belonged to the Bruins. Going the other way, 6.06 left in the third. Zooms Sitco with five convenient Hampton locations to serve your needs. Zoom Sitco, we appreciate those folks for continuing to sponsor Channel 5 Sports. Back come the Bruins, they've got a two on none and too far under the basket was Bryant, but the follow shot is good and six points here in the third quarter for Lakeisha Anders. She can get those easy stick backs. Nice move to the bucket by oh. Palmer, but it didn't go. Excellent move, excellent move, but just couldn't come up with a basket. Hey, for all your printing needs, get your call in to Gear Up Printing. They're located at 1909 North Armstead Avenue, and you can give them a call. Somewhere here, 827, 82-77 as McKinnon <laughs> scores. Tim, she can run under a ball. You throw that ball out like a, a tight end or a wide receiver going down for a pass, and she'll run right underneath it. We got time, it oh, looks sure. like. Now we got a timeout, and I can tell you that Hampton Chevrolet is a locally owned business and strongly believes in supporting the community in which it serves. Don't forget Hampton Chevrolet wants to remind you to join the PTA. Support your school system. Five, 519, this is McKinnon on the uh, fast break. A nice lead pass to her. Uh, we again will pick a player of the game from each one of these teams and they will receive a shirt and a plaque. The plaque comes from Buck Walter engraving. Where's the um, shirt and the plaque? Beg your pardon? Where's the shirt and the plaque? Uh, where is the shirt and the plaque? You said there you see the shirt and the plaque. Yeah, you see it. Don't you see it? No, I don't see oh, it. Oh, well, see, there you go. You're just tired. <laughs> but the plaque comes from Buckwalter Engraving on Kickatan Road, Dave Buckwalter, and the shirt comes from Islander Hardware and Sporting Goods in Pocosin. Does Scotty make John it magically Roberts. appear? <laughs> <laughs> we well, I'm, like a shirt I'm more shirt and he's more plaque, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, does Scotty make it a, a, 
magically appear when you say that? Is that what happens? Well, sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I did see that one time. I said, man, how'd they do that? You know, because I'm, I'm thinking, well, I never saw a shirt in a black. <laughs> and then I watched the game that one time, and, and Bob says a shirt in a black, and there it was. It was uh, rather impressive. It's the as, magic of television. As Scotty can do anything. <laughs> That's right. He's got enough time. <laughs> <laughs> he has plenty of time. He can do it. And money, don't forget money. Well, that's true too. That always helps. Palmer, back to the game at hand. 48 21, 453 remaining as the Bruins. And an offensive foul charged to Terry Smith as she lowered that left shoulder and just plowed through the defender. <laughs> and you can't do that except with that oblong ball. She looked like uh, one of those football players First going through that. Uh, Going through the line, here it is. And I don't know, that young lady stepped out in front of her, so. Yeah. I, Not me. Oh, she's an actress too, maybe, uh, Scotty thinks. But that was a good job. Yeah, she did a good job of uh, drawing that foul. The good ones do it. We do want to remind you that the uh, Channel 5 crew will also have for you the boys contest between these two schools. That's coming up. Check Channel 5 listing for the time that game would be seen. Oh, that was a nice pass. You should, that's one time that uh, McKinnon should have gone ahead and shot the ball rather than to, to pass. A good shot of uh, Paula Hines, the new coach over at uh, Hampton High. Teaches at uh, Spratley. There's that speed. But the easy layup on go. She got her own rebound. Still can't get it to drop. Try it again. No. And underneath, no, but this time a foul. Four shots. You think you'd get it, but you got the foul shot. That puts Anders at the foul line. And that's Tanissa McDonald called for the personal foul. Forty-eight twenty-one our score. Almost halfway through the third period. There you see Vernon Clater directing his team. I talked to Vernon uh, this morning, and uh, it's about 11 o'clock when I finally got. He drives from Richmond, Tim, every day. Oh, my gosh. And he said, I got this morning, there was about an inch of ice on my vehicle. <laughs> he says, it's a good thing we started two hours late this morning. But he's got a four-wheel drive and made it down all right with no mishaps. My ex-boss still does that, has been doing it for nine years, driving from Colonial Heights right outside of Whoa. Richmond every single day of the week, five days a week. Puts a lot of, a lot of miles on the car. Loose ball picked up by Palmer, and she sticks it in. Palmer's been doing a good job. He's been hustling up and down the court. Well, I was looking at the statistics uh, for these two squads, uh, and Palmer has uh, had double figures every game but one. She, her low game is three points against Gloucester, but all the other games she's had at least 10 points and as high as 16. And she, uh, so far in this game, tonight has six. Well, let's not be lack of hustle. It's not because of the lack of hustle. These young ladies out here are, are going up and down. Now we got five brand new ones in for the uh, Hampton Crabbers. I'll Come give on. you the, the names to go along with those numbers. Lakeisha Reed will uh, inbounds the ball. Carrie Melvin, number five, is in the lineup as well, along with Vanessa Scholes, number 30. 44 is Ellen Kiger. And 42, I think, is the other one, Tim. Yeah, 42, and that would be LaKenya Parker. So, uh, fresh legs. Paula Hines says, let me bring five fresh bodies in here and see how we can do. They uh, respond by getting a good shot. It doesn't go. And then a tie up underneath and a foul is called. Well, that's what you got to do. And, and uh, Hampton knows in a half court that they can get the ball down inside. Fennell and uh, Kyer do a good job, but they've just not been able to get the ball down inside because of this tenacious defense of the Bruins. Tamika Guild, number 33, has come in now for the Lady Bruins, uh, along with Ebony Dixon. So 
So it's Bryant, and then there's 32, Carla Roan. And number 25, Katizia Keller. And again, I apologize if I mispronounce the names of any of our players tonight. And if they'll bring it to our attention, we will be more than happy to make sure we get it right. Loose ball is finally... Well, let's see what they're going to call. They're going to call a foul, but it was like, uh, you get it, I'll yeah, hand you. it off, or let's move it around. <laughs> it was kind of like a hot potato. That's right. I don't want it. You take it. Monica Bryant is the player the foul was called on. So Hampton will inbound. That'll be Kerry Melvin underneath the basket. And the Crabbers will bring it up. This is McDonald. So check that. 42, not 12. That's Parker. I should correct myself. This is Parker again, and she stepped on the baseline. Well, there wasn't enough room, so she. <laughs> that's the only place she could get by is is on the baseline. We got Ron ESPN Baton down there on that camera right at the sideline, or at the end line, I should say. Two and a half to go in the third, 51-23. Good feed, shot won't drop. Loose ball, battle four, and a foul is called. Oh, there's our buddy Dave Chubb. He's got a box of something there. Maybe he's got some goodies for us. And it's Dave Pearson, the uh, principal here at Bethel High School. Maybe Dave brought the, uh, the shirts. Now, if I can get the other Dave Buckwell to bring the plaques, there you go. Running one-hander by Tamika Guild, her first basket. And the Bruin lead now is 30. And they cause the ball to go out of bounds, but it will still belong to the Crabbers. Last touched by a Lady Bruin. You're watching the Lady Crabbers and the Lady Bruins of Bethel High School. Tim Cole and Bob Hintz coming to you. This game videotaped on the 12th of January, 1996. Well, the, the Bruins are in a 1 2 2 zone. That's the first time they've been in zone, and I assume it's because they've got all new faces in there. Shot won't go, but the rebound is controlled by the Bruins. They kick it outside. Try and work it down low. Baseline blocked. 44 with the block on 44. And that ball is knocked out of bounds, but it was last touched by Hampton. Little ragged. Well, I, I like to see this. The, the, both coaches, the game is pretty much out of hand, so both coaches have gone deeply to their bench to get some playing time, and that's a, a good thing. These young ladies practice hard all week long, and there's no reason why they shouldn't get in the game. There you go. Good point. Ebony Dixon. Scores. That's her first bucket. And the lead is 55 to 23. On the baseline, shot is short. Stick back, no good. Loose ball, controlled by the Lady Crabbers, up, no good. And finally <laughs> rebounded by the Bruins. We got them flying out of that pack. No lack of hustle, I'll tell you that. Basket oh, is good. And excellent pass. Ball. But see, you know, sometimes the pass is good, but the, you don't catch it. That time was a, not only a good pass, but good hands, caught the ball, put it up, got the basket, and got a chance for a three-point play. That's number 21. I'm looking at the right roster here, Davis. Yep, Lakeisha Davis at the free throw line. She got the basket and a chance for a three. Foul was charged to Richardson. Shannon. I was going to say, when you say Richardson for Hampton, you've got to even take it one step further. Which Richardson? From the free throw line, shot won't go. Rebound in the hands of the Lady Crabbers by Reed, Lakeisha Reed. A little more than half a minute to go in the third. And the Crabbers lose it out of bounds. Guild giving to Dixon. 
And then Dixon tries to pass it to Anders. <laughs> Anders, or check, rather not Anders, but uh, you missed that. Joy, one of the one of the yeah, Bruins on the bench tapped the ball back in to try to act like it didn't get out of bounds. <laughs> that only counts against you if you get caught. That's right. And stolen by Davis. But she can't hold on to it. James Bond time on the clock, 007. Every time I see that, I think of James Bond. You ever, you ever done? Yeah, time? in fact, I guess when I asked Mike Talon out at uh, Phoebus if he's uh, James Bond, and he says, well, I said, well, your phone number is 1007. That's the extension to the Dean of Boys office. Yeah, so, you, I, you know, you're the number 1007, right? That's right. Well, that was a good quarter for the Bruins as uh, they had led 38 to 19. They had 19 to their total, only four for the Lady Crabbers. So the first and third periods have been soft for Paula Hines' group. And of course, they will do their best to regroup here in the fourth period coming up in just a moment. Sure, we covered all of our five corporate sponsors. Just oh, this is a good see. shot of uh, Nathaniel Braxton clear up in the rafters. In the nosebleed section. <laughs> Let's see, we talked about gear up printing and talked about the fine folks at Hampton Chevrolet. And we talked about Zoom Sitco. So I guess we covered the third quarter. I think we have. I, I think you have. I think someone did. So we'll get them squared away and we'll get the four in there. And, and who that? Oh, who is that? You know who that is. Sonia. Tanya. 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 No, Sounds Sonia. like. Tanya. Sounds like. Waving at you. <laughs> she says, don't, don't put the camera on me. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, definitely the best looking camera person we have. Well, I, I won't even start to argue that. Whoa. Just inside the three-point line, and that is Ebony Dixon, and her foot was on the line. Otherwise, that'd be a trade. Lady Bruins looking for victory number nine. Off to a quick start. And the Crabbers lose it on the baseline. Lee will inbounds. Both teams uh, appear to have st stayed with the same lineup that ended the third period. Yeah, I think they're going to give their uh, second stringers some experience, and that's, as you can point out, that's a good, that's a good thing to do because you get experience playing in, in practice, but playing with real referees and in front of some fans, a little different. Nothing can take the place of experience. That's it. And uh, Bethel is staying in that zone. They've switched to a, it looks like a 2-1-2 zone. Good move to the basket. Ball didn't drop, but that was a, a good play by the Crappers. And uh, Fidel tries to stick back and draws the foul. Well, the Hamptons got some of their new people, or some of their uh, starters back in right now, it looks like. But we got to be looking at uh, player of the game for both of these two teams, something we want to keep in mind. Certainly have some uh, obvious candidates. Uh, McKinnon. Watch a little of the action replayed for you. Right from underneath the basket. Beverly Penn. Working the magic of the instant replay tonight. Yeah, she is doing good. Bianca Petaway, she's in there also. She's working on the graphics. She said she was a little cold when she came back in her. Her nose looked like she was Rudolph. <laughs> she's as red as those Hampton uh, girls jerseys. Oh, nice touch on that ball. 33 for the Bruins. Who that, is that? That is uh, Miss Guild, Tamika Guild. She's got four points. 61 to 23 is the score. That's a three-point attempt from Palmer. It doesn't go. And it was knocked out of bounds. It was last touched by the Lady Bruins. Well, that's one thing that, uh, that I'm sure that uh, Paula Hines will go back and look at this shot chart is uh, Bethel was getting a whole lot more shots at the basket than the Crabbers. And, uh, you know, regardless of what percentage, if you don't shoot the ball, it won't go in. you got to put it up. 
and it seems like they turn the ball over a lot of times before they get a shot. And again, it's, it, a lot of that has to do with the defense. I don't want to mislead you, but. Looks like a pretty good block from Terry Smith, but she got her with the body, I guess, and it'll draw two shots for the Lady Bruins. Tom Gear and Gear Up Printing have been instrumental in the recent establishment of a new honors park, honoring police officers in our community who made the ultimate sacrifice. And we take our hat off to Tom Gear and Gear Up Printing for their efforts. As we watch some of the replay, we've got a timeout on the floor. Hampton called the timeout. Speaking of Hampton, what a segue. Hampton Chevrolet, one of our sponsors throughout the football season, located over there at 1073 West Mercury Boulevard in Hampton. A leader in the community of uh, getting involved with charities and different uh, things of that nature. Hampton Chevrolet, again, they encourage you to join the PTA. Get involved in your children's education. Absolutely. And we're watching. You can only make things happen if you're involved. Hampton and Bethel. These are the Bethel cheerleaders doing their thing for us. And again, we remind you that coming up here on Channel 5, check for the time of it, we'll have the Hampton Bethel boys game for you also. There you see Carter Ficklin. Get this. Play underway, 5.59 remaining in the fourth quarter. 61 to 23 as the Bethel Bruins have never looked back after racing out to a quick lead. Guild misses the first of two. And can't get the second one either. Richardson to Fennell. Baseline, heavy contact. And oh, yeah. Out. She's hurt her hand. Did 32 Richardson, Shannon Richardson. Jammed her hand, but she's tough. Stays in there. No timeouts. Back come the Lady Bruins. Terry Smith all over. The Bruins. Fifteen footer is good by Ebony Dixon. Dixon with seven points. Now Bethel's in a 1-3-1 uh, full court trap. They're going to try to get him just as they come across the uh, half court line and uh, work. Got him to throw the ball away. Giving him a lot of different looks is uh, Vernon Clater. Forty-point lead for the Lady Bruins against a young and up-and-coming Hampton Prevers. Lee shot underneath is partially blocked. Back come the Lady Prevers. Palmer, good feed underneath yes, for was. Richardson. Spotted the open player, and Richardson made no mistake. Six points for Sharonda. And we're going to have wholesale up substitution again for the Lady Crabbers and uh, one new one for the Bruins. The Lady Bruin was easy to pick up. That is Rashida L Luter. Watch the replay of that. Yeah, nice, nice touch on that ball. A lot of times when you got that much time to prepare for a shot, you don't do well, but she did. She did a good job of... Uh, Gathering herself, square shoulders, nice follow through. Knocked out of bounds by the Lady Bruins. Looter 
saves it on the baseline. Here's that speed. Bruins have got a lot of it. Ebony Dixon has eight points, all of them coming here in the second half. As uh, Vernon Clater has rested his starters. Uh, 19 points is the leading score. That's Siobhan McKinnon, but she has only gotten two points here in the second half. All of her points came in the first half. Well, uh, she's been on the bench for the most part, yeah, and that's a good point. Resting the regulars. Well, I tell you, that's what you need to do is get that experience in there because you get that Peninsula District Tournament. Well, if they got to play tomorrow night and they got to play uh, Phoebus, Phoebus girls have uh, done a good job of turning that uh, uh, Turn that program around from last year. They only won a couple games last year. Liz Mears out there has done a good job. And they've got to be reckoned with. They shoot the ball well, play good defense. Well, as competitive as the league is, you can't afford to lose too many games. You don't want to lose your standing in there. That's and then right. have, to, have to take on some of the top teams. Of course, the seeding is based on how you finish during the regular season. Stolen by the Bruins. Less than three minutes to go. Off the glass and good by number 22. That is Dorshan Bradshaw. So Miss Bradshaw is in the scorebook. Well, now uh, Bethel is in a 2-3 zone. They're just forcing the uh, crab, trying to take the passing lane away from the Crabbers. Way downtown. Well, if you can't get the ball in one way, you try to get it in another. Well, she shot that one from Phoebus. <laughs> well, not quite Phoebus, well, but it was a uh, maybe an NBA three. Yeah. <laughs> Two ten left in the ball game. Sixty nine to twenty five. Bob, who are the players of the game? Well, uh, we're going to go with Shavana McKinnon for the Bruins. That one's easy. Uh, for the uh, Hampton, I'm leaning towards uh, young Miss Fennell, Katrina Fennell. I, I like that. All right, that's who we'll go with. Me. So Katrina Fennell and Siobhan McKinnon. They will receive a plaque and a shirt. See, I don't have it, it right here with me. There it is. <laughs> but it may be there. You never know. <laughs> that's right. The magic of television. A plaque comes from Buckwalter Engraving, and we appreciate Dave Buckwalter and all his help. And the uh, shirt comes from the Hardware's Island of Hardware and Sporting Goods out in Pocosa. This first year they've uh, done this. We uh, was using Sports Place. Sports Place was sold to another uh, group of people, and uh, Mr. Chubb went out to Islander and said, "Hey, we can do that." And I said, sounds good to me. We appreciate them. Carrie Melvin at the free throw line for the Lady Crabbers. For her first point of the night, and it's just off the mark. She'll get a second try. Shame. Nice shot. Uh, I guess Violation takes it away. <laughs> Work all night to get a point, and it's wiped out. That would be the story of my basketball history. You got some history? Not when it comes to basketball. <laughs> I think the Lady Bruin bench would go nuts if Luter scores again, number 42. They, they, they watch everything she does. Yeah. And she had a chance here and almost put it in, and they uh, they got up and they were ready to cheer. You can see them just out of the top of your, your picture there. You would have thought she'd scored the winning basket. <laughs> uh, Obviously a team favorite. Yeah, I think a foul was called on uh, 31. No, oh, I'm sorry, 34. Lakeisha Reed for the uh, Crabbers. Looter's shot won't go. And a tie up underneath. 
One of the few times tonight we've had to use the possession arrow. Not many times. It's this only time, been the second time that I can remember. I don't recall. Yeah, this is the second time, and it favors the Lady Crabbers. So with a minute 10 remaining, and the game all but over, 69 to 25, Bernie Clater will have his team move to a 9 and 2 record, and Hampton will fall to 1 and 8. We're like Grand Central Station here at this. Uh, always is. <laughs> always is. I want to thank the uh, fine folks here at Bethel High School for all of the cooperation, as always. Dennis Kozlowski, athletic director. David Pearson, principal. Uh, Fendolf Taylor, sister principal here earlier. We talked with him. Appreciate all their help. Two to eight clicks. A little more than half a minute to go. Belong to Hampton with 22 seconds remaining. Inbounds to Kiger. Her shot won't drop. Loose ball and final control by the Bruins. The Bruins will keep possession with four seconds to go. shot the buzzer sounds to end the contest so again we want to thank all the folks here at Bethel High School and congratulate the Lady Bruins and Vernon Clater for the victory as they win going away by the final score of 69 to 27 over the Lady Crabbers for Bob Hintz and the entire Channel 5 crew this is Tim Cole and don't let me forget that our game tonight <laughs> has been brought to you in part by Hampton Chevrolet by Zooms with five convenient Hampton locations. Bring up for your next print job, call Gear Up. And in part by Wood Funeral Home, Richard Pulley, Funeral Director. Again, there, the final score is the Lady Bruins, 69, the Lady Crabbers, 27. Now, for Bob Hintz and the entire <laughs> Channel 5 crew, this is Tim Cole. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody.